Hey, beekeeps. What's up? I gotta show you something here. Pretty cool. Yeah, one of my subscribers sent this to me. He's been watching my channel and he's been uh, knocking out some uh, Steve O beefy beehives, five framers. So he came up with something pretty cool here. I gotta show you. Why I didn't think of this, I don't know. All right, here we go. Here we go. I got it on desktop here. Let's just click on this here. Boom. There it is, guys. There it is. Look at that. Yeah. So. This is from Darby. I got a reflection back here. Let me get rid of this reflection. There, there we go, I got rid of the reflection. Uh, yeah, what we have here, guys, is a Stevo five frame beefy, beefy beehive, and what he's done, he's taken a beefy beehive, so you've got the, right here, the two inch material, inch and a half material, rather, on the ends with pallet wood sides with pallet wood sides. What a economical box is that, okay? And what he's done is take some eighth inch tempered masonite and see what he's done. He's cut in here to center line, center line, okay? So he's got a slot. So you cut these ends before you assemble, obviously. And uh, now we've taken a five frame beefy with a two frame, with an internal two frame nuke. This is, this is cool. Like I said, I don't know why I didn't think of this. Because people are taking, matter of fact, we'll talk about it in a minute here. I went and got some queens uh, from my breeder to my north here. And uh, anyway, he runs 10 frame boxes and he breaks the 10 frame boxes into three uh, internal, basically three frame mating nukes. So he makes it what they call a queen castle. But here we can utilize the five frame box, beefy, instead of building these two frame standalone jobbies that I have out here. And I've got enough material to burn out, uh, what do they do? I built I built five of the two frame boxes, but I think I'm going to discontinue that. Use what I have, of course, but I have a lot of two by ends. I'm going to they're already pre cut to ten inch. I'm going to do a scarf and glue job with a little sliver. They're not if you take two two by fours to glue them together, you're not going to have enough room to make a five frame box. You're gonna to have to add a sliver of wood here, which is no biggie for me. And I would take a slice, probably a half inch slice. I gotta throw the tape measure on to see what I need to create the box. But anyway, uh, yeah, and I've done this before. I've glued two bys before together to make a beefy, five frame beefy. So anyway, but this is very cool. Thank you very much um, for this. Uh, this is what, you know, we beekeepers, we have to, you know, bounce out ideas off of each other. And uh, so that's what we do. Makes beekeeping fun and interesting. Yeah, so anyway, I appreciate this. Let's go out back and then I'm going to do it. We'll go in the barn here and I'll show you how I'm going to lay out. I've already cut some of these. I've already cut some of these ends, so I've got a handle on it uh, with my little homemade table saw, how we can accomplish this task. Let's go check that out. Okay guys, uh, Miss Daisy's girlfriend sent me a birthday card, and here we go. She, she knows she knows I'm a carnivore, so this, is, this ties in nicely. Uh, it says here, uh, good news, good news. There's a tasty way to enjoy whole grains and leafy greens. Whoa, see the little farmer there? There's his patch. Let's check it out. Let's see, let's, let's find out how to do this. 
because most of the left wing uh, uh, ice cream eaters and cookie eaters they don't know how to do this but here's a here's a great way to do it see you'd be a little farmer like this and grow your greens see and it says here here's your little farmer he's offering up here it is right here see this all right here's how you do it feed them to a cow and they'll turn into a delicious satisfying steak happy beef day happy beef day is that not is that not perfect guys okay guys stopped at Lowe's this morning got me some eighth got some eighth inch uh, tempered masonite I had to get a four by eight sheet but this will give us a lot of dividers right here and so we'll get set up on that here in, in a moment yeah guys yesterday morning I got up early and uh, went north uh, about 40 minutes north and I picked up uh, I ordered five queens mated queens and they are now installed in my two frame mini mating nukes they're sealed up uh, so I got 524 on them which I installed the queens I made them up on 23 so they sat for 24 hours and here I had a slight gap and you can see the problem child we have here robbing so I put a couple bricks on there I think that sideboard right there was up a little bit I don't think it's an issue with the lid I think that sideboard was up just a tweak enough to get a bee in or they're trying to get in these girls are really hungry right now yes so we got some little nukes here with some some queens in here what do we got here going on they're trying to get in they're they're fiercely trying to get in here they're fiercely trying to get in there but there's no uh, no not a big enough gap yeah and they're a little pissy they're flying around bumping into me uh, this time of year I, I've really got to watch this and when we we open these up Sunday I'll open these up and let them fly and I'm also gonna check to see if the Queens are chewed out how I got the Queens from Matthew he's a breeder to my north this is how I got them uh, actually he gave me one he threw an extra in I don't know if he knew it was my birthday or not guys but anyway he threw an extra one in so I got six queens I have another one over here see I put Matthew I put Matt Queen when I did it and here's one here Matt Queen oh yeah oh yeah baby lots of bees so this will be good they're Italian he runs a pretty cool little operation a uh, little one-man show I think his son helps him and his dad helps him once in a while but he he runs uh, three to four hundred hives um, tries to do a little honey operation also but I think the honey thing he said the orange this year just sucked it was it wasn't good at all but he's making a little bit I think on gallberry and, and palmetto saw palmetto and then he'll have cabbage palm coming but anyway and then he, I think he's got some good pepper locations uh, that he can get that crop in September but anyway uh, he runs a course a flatbed and then he runs a I think a two-ton flatbed and he's got a piggyback donkey you know the three-wheeled ones you got the two power wheels in the front and then basically a dolly in the back to where you can spin 360 with them things and he's on four-way clip pallets and I was showing him my beefy five framers and he did like them he did he liked the looks of them but he runs pretty much all castles and he runs 10 frame equipment on clip pallets so he can load it out quickly with a forklift I don't know he may be into a little pollination service too uh, but I'm I don't know I don't get into people's business too much they just throw little tidbits at me you know what they're doing but anyway yeah that's the way he rolls and he running three to four 
three to four hundred colonies is what he's running. He told me it, it's up. You know, when you get in commercial, it's like this, up and down. You know, your colonies are up and down. But he said he tries to maintain three to four hundred, and that that makes his plate pretty full. Uh, but he does a lot of queens. Uh, he's running. I said, how many of these queens you burning out? He says, I try to burn out 300 a month. What? What? Yeah, 300 a month. At 30 bucks a clip, that's what I paid, $30 a piece. And he threw me in an extra one, which was nice. But here's how, he, here's how I got them right here. This is how he, he, how he does them. And of course, it depends on how many you get. If he's, if he's burning out 300 a month, he's probably supplying some commercial guys plus his own operation but see all he does he puts some candy in here smears a little candy in the bottom here and then um, takes and then he loads up your queens and then he he shakes he shakes a bunch of nurse bees down in here and uh, yeah shuts the lid and there you go so they have different configurations you can get big boxes and ship them that way but yeah i think the queen thing is his bread and butter the honey thing is just maybe helps pay the gas bill and a light bill a little bit but i think where the money's made is in these queens so that's what he does so anyway i got six of them he runs all italian pretty much all italian bees so we'll see how they go. I I like to mix up my genetics. So yeah. So we got a lot of bees cooking, but with the five frame and the internal uh, two frame mini, I think we can go ahead and eliminate all this. You know, I've got enough for like 16 of the two framers. I got enough pre-cut lumber. I burnt these out the other day. You saw me cut those and we assembled them and yada yada. I think I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, I asked Matthew about that, about the twos. What do you think of twos? Uh, I don't care for the twos. Because he's running castles. If you take a 10 frame box and, and cut it into threes, you have a castle beehive with three two. Uh, actually three three framers he said the beauty of three you have a little more flexibility with two frames you can rob one out then you you know he said you don't have much, enough material in there and uh so i agree with that setup but for me with my small operation and i'm trying to get condensed things down right why have why have uh a ton of these things laying around when you can just pull dividers and make this a universal box. Yeah. So thank you very much, Darby, for that. Uh, like I said, I don't know why I didn't think of it. Because people are whacking these things all the time into putting in dividers in these 10 frame boxes. And some of them even do four ways in a 10 frame box. So that would be two frames you'd be basically making two framers and they put four holes each direction they put one on the end one on the other corner and then they put uh, uh, holes on the sides they'll do a hole on the sides is what they do so they'll have a hole here hole on the other side and then one hole here one hole there on those but uh Matthew pretty much uh, is doing the same thing. He has holes on it, and I think he's got little plates he turns or whatever, little sheet metal things he turns to close them off and this and that. Yeah, they're drinking syrup, guys, like freaking crazy. I mean, just absolutely. There's a dry one there. I went down through here and loaded them up. Man, I'm pounding sugar, and these bees are huge. I mean, they're just viciously hungry. I don't know what's going on here. They can't get in. I don't know why they're attacking this thing like they are. Here's another one over here. They're just they're just fighting to get into this thing. I put little pint jars on. 
they're very delicate. They're just minimal bees in this thing. Uh, I put a frame of food and a frame of brood, but some of these, some of these broods were, you know, heavier duty than others. So anyway, I think with the beefy, with the internal two framer, it's going to work out absolutely crazy nice. And where our pineapple farm is coming along nicely here. Boom. This is turning into a flipping jungle in here. These are old. So this, these pineapples, I mean, look at that one down there. It's huge. The plant itself I'm talking about is freaking huge. These things are, uh, I planted them in 99. Would you believe it? 99. These things just keep going harvesting every year. Here's one here. Uh, here's one here. What do we got back here? Anything going on? Here's one here. And they don't always give you fruit. I mean, it's just, it varies. Some, some years you'll get a fruit on one, and the next you don't. It's weird. These things are weird. I, I don't know. Nothing seems to be very consistent on them. But you'll get a little star-looking thing coming right out of the center here. Right here, you'll get a little star, a little, little bitty brown star will start coming up. And that is the tips you'll see the tips coming up. Just the tips here of these. And then boom, all of a sudden there it'll be. And it takes a few, a month or two, or three, to get a fruit. And some of these are get really like the big store-bought ones. And then sometimes you get smaller ones. It just varies. I do nothing, I do nothing to these uh, pineapples at all. I do not fertilize this stuff at all. The only fertilizer it gets are these oak trees, these oak limbs, I mean leaves, fall down. See the leaves? They rot down. Apparently there's enough goodies in them leaves to feed, to feed uh, these pineapples. But I've got them all over. I've got a big batch there. i got them all along the fence line. There's hundreds. I have hundreds of these pineapples. But if I get... I'll probably end up with about 20, 20 pineapples, probably. But I don't eat that much. I, I give them to friends and stuff. If they get too ripe, I cut them, I cube them, I put them in freezer bags, put them in the freezer. They keep great. And uh, friends come over, you want some pine? Oh, yeah, they go crazy for it. So you can you can put them in dehydrator too, but when you do that, you're taking out all the water, and what are you leaving? A little flesh, and it's like eating a, a cube of sugar. I'm not kidding, guys. Super high in sugar, super high. So I don't even really eat it, but they, if, if a great once in a great wild treat or something, I'll eat a few bites, but it's high sugar, but I understand it has anti-inflammatory properties to that but they may be saying that just to sell pineapples too guys I don't know but anyway this is my little operation going on here uh, we're gonna be making a lot of the two framers uh, I asked Matthew about uh, doing walkaways with two framers he said ah not so much he said I, I don't I've never had any good luck doing walkaways. He says I graft. He said I can go in the grafting shack and burn out all kind of grafts uh and install cells. Why fool around with a walkway? He said you your turnaround so much better plus the fact that you are a breeding from a from a quality stock. So I'm hoping we'll see how these girls go. I'm going to go in probably Sunday when I open the hatches. I'm going to peek in there and see if these girls crawled out. If they haven't, I may just go ahead and open them up and let them release them. I felt the candy in there. The candy was kind of hard a little bit. A little. I don't think it was as soft as I normally see the candy. 
so that may be an issue but who knows they could dig them queens out of there fast you don't want to release them too fast because you want to absorb the smell of the colony these these are bred queens these are going to start wanting to lay so you can't leave them sitting on them two framers very long i'll have to be vigilant as soon as i see some eggs they're popping eggs they're coming out and they're going straight into straight into fives is what they're doing yes all right let's go in the barn and, and i'll show you what my layout is on these uh, internal slots okay guys i'm in the shop here uh Here's my little quick setup. It's basically to create this interior deal here. One and three quarter is about the size. One and three quarter off of this wall right here is the center of that slot. That gives you room right there for your two frames plus a little leeway plus a little leeway in there so one and three quarters so what I did is set up a fence here now this blade kerf is only going to give you about an eighth or so or less than an eighth okay it's a very thin blade but you see the outside of that tooth and the outside of that tooth will give you probably an eighth so what I did pass it through right turn it around pass it through right then I took my hammer I scribed a line here with a pencil right here or a ink pen then I come over here with my adjustment tool this is my fence adjustment tool kind of like caveman style and you do this. See your line right there? Right there. Boom. Boom. Right there. Just a little bit over. Grab your wood again. Boom. Boom. Have a test piece. Have a small test piece to stick in there. Make sure you got a little slop to it. That's it. Guys, is this is this stuff getting tough or what? I mean, you know, Steve-O wants your world to be nice and easy. I've got a couple here. I did one here and one there. So I've got this is set up. So your internal your internal pieces, your slides in here are 19 three quarter by 10 inches high. That's it. Now you may have to tweak it slightly. But you want to end up, you don't want a big gap in here. If you do, you know, if you had an eighth of an inch maybe gap here, that's fine. But you may have to fine tune the ends and the tops a little bit. Obviously, you don't want bees crawling over. But the, them crawling over and getting into this dead space here and the dead space here, uh, unlikely, yeah. But that's the numbers, 19 and 3 quarter long, 10 inch, for my beefy beehives. Now if you're trying to put walls inside of a standard data and equipment, of course these numbers are not going to work for you. You're going to have to do something else. But this is the beauty of the beefy beehive. Uh, yes. So what do you think of that, guys? I think we're going to have a more universal box. And the beauty too of this is, so you've got this wall in here and your queen is starting to lay. You cannot leave these queens in a, in a tight environment like this very long. They're gonna, they're gonna try to swarm on you, okay? But you could come in, say if you wanted to add a third frame, just pull this one divider out. Instead of blowing the whole box out to five frames, pull this divider out leave this wall in drop a frame in here or two whatever let her blow those out pull this out and let her fill the box up then you can transfer once she fills this box you can transfer that to 10 frame equipment 8 frame equipment or 
like me, add another box on top. Add another super box, same as this, just has no floor and screen in it. Add another box on here. Some of my hives will be four, stacked four high by, by September 30, October 15, anywhere in that area. Some of my boxes will be three high because I'm going into a pepper flow and they pack it on usually with that. If a hurricane doesn't blow my hair back because we're in hurricane season by then. So keep your fingers crossed that I don't get blown away. Every year it seems like they're getting a little more intense, but they probably really aren't. It's just it's just what the patterns are, you know. So that's that guys. I don't know if I'm gonna fool around anymore. I've got I've got these. I got these girls right here. They're already pre-cut. What I what I'll probably end up doing with these is I lock them in my vise and I grab this saw right here and I scarify it. I grab it and just scar it good. There and there, the two surfaces I want to mate. Then I glue Bontite 3. Boom, boom. I throw a clamp on it, make sure my ends are nice, nip and tucky. Clamp it up, let it sit for 24. I come back and I can take one of these, set up my saw. I don't have enough room here for five. With these two here, that gives you seven inches. I need a little more space here. A little bit more. That's only seven inches. I, I need seven and a quarter. So what I'll probably do is come back and burn myself about, I don't know, maybe a half inch. If I had a little more slop on these boxes, fine. I'll probably burn a half an inch on my table saw. And that'll get glued. I don't need to scarify it so much. I may scar it, though. I may scar it on each side, but what I'll do is shoot glue, glue, and pound it in with my inch and a quarter brad nailer right through there, about, about, about three of them in there. Done deal. Now I've got an end like this. And then I can come back and I can cut my slots, inch and a half slots in there, like this. I'm probably going to burn out all of this material here with the internal internal mini, just like this. You've got lots of material here. I don't think you're going to have a warp issue, whatever. But I think it's going to work out fantastic. And normally, you're only working on a regular uh, castle hive. Castle hive. You're only working with three-quarter material, as you know, when you're doing standard hives. We've got all, with this beefy, you've got all inch and a half to play with here. So you've got structurally strong walls, plus you can make this slot. So you can have a little slop here in this. If you make these and get a little bit too much slop in here, no biggie, put a little silicone on a caulk gun, just a little shot of silicone here and here. After you're ready to pull your dividers to make it a full five, you can go in here with your Leatherman's or a pocket knife and quickly gouge out that silicone out of there and, and stack these up in storage. But you're gonna have to be pretty accurate on these cuts because you obviously need a nice flush top here. You see that you've just seen out there in the field how viciously those bees are attacking trying to get into that box and one of my stronger colonies are probably the ones trying to attack that thing and if they find a weak spot they're going in and they're going to kick everybody's ass in that box and rob out everything they got so you're going to lose the queen you're going to lose everything so make sure your box are tight and you will have that with 
those little dials on the front you can tweak those down to give yourself only a half inch quarter inch whatever for those bees to get in and out that queen she'll find her way out well these won't they're already bred they're, when she pops out of that cage she's gonna say give me some cells I need to lay eggs when they come out of there. and I may I may start buying some queens I mean 30 grand and 30 dollars is you know expensive but you just figure it into the cost of your nuke you can go around and rob frames say if you want to make a five frame nuke go around and rob three frames with resources and enough seal brood on there to where as they hatch they can help you know stabilize that co colony and buy if you've got queens available even at 30 bucks a pop you can install them and you can kick that nuke in high gear in a hurry. As soon as she emerges, she's going to be laying eggs, okay? But give her time. You don't want her out of there too fast because they will more than likely kill her. And then you throw away $30, okay? So be vigilant on that. And I'm going to, like I said, go in on Sunday and play peekaboo and see what the reaction is too of those queens in them cages. If them bees are, are aggressively trying to get at her in that cage, you can tell, you can tell, you watch them, you can tell if they're aggressively trying to get her. If they're kind of chilling and walking around, they know mama's in there, open that thing and let her out. And uh, have, have, you know, be ready to retrieve her. If, if they start to attack her, you can retrieve her quick and get her back in that cage. But after four days, five days, she should be good to go. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for today. I just thought I'd show you this. Uh, thank you, sir, for showing me this little interior trick here on the interior the beefy five framer with the internal two frame mini see you soon guys be happy be strong we got to keep getting her on and i got to go to work i got all that material to cut up let's get her done see you next time bye bye Okay, guys, before I let you go, one more thing. Thought I'd show you my quick cutting on the Craig saw. It's a rail saw. My son always watches out for me. He saw me cutting plywood, guys, with a skill saw. He goes, oh, no, Dad. He, Dad. You are a knuckle dragon caveman, okay? That's all he told me. You're a knuckle dragon caveman. Stop it. Just stop it. I said, You got any better solutions? You'll see in the morning. He's over there on the phone, guys, going. Dip, 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 dip. This arrived. He put overnight shipping. This thing was on my doorstep the next day from. Amazon and what I got was the saw plus the rail so this is called a rail saw all I've done when you first get this rail saw this there's a plastic piece on here for cushion because you obviously this is aluminum you don't want to run your blade through aluminum but what it, that blade does it's normally out to here when you first get your saw. That, that plastic piece is out here. But this saw right here, there's a groove right there. See that groove? It falls right in on that track. Now you have a saw that slides here, okay? But when you first start your initial piece, you have to be out here past the piece because this is a plunge saw. And you'll see I put a two by four here, here, there's one here, there's one here. So now that blade, and then there's one here to kind of just floating here to support this tail end of this sheet. Okay, 
So I've set this thing up like this. So when you make your first initial cut, you'll be cutting off that plastic through there, okay? So I needed a 10 inch piece, but you've got your saw curve. So you want to kick over that way. If your material is here, your 10 inch piece is here, that saw curve was just about a 16th of an inch. So I pulled over my tape measure. I put a spot right on it and I just a quick arrow there and an arrow here. Right there, if you can see it. You may be a shade off this way or that. There's my spot right there. And just tweak it back over there. There and there. All right, so make sure you have it up. You can adjust the height on this plunge, which I've already preset it. Very handy tool. Uh, what I'm figuring out here, I'm getting six beehives, six per sheet, per four by eight sheet for these interior walls. I'm getting sick enough for six. You got two, uh, you got, you're going to have six of these links, but you're wasting this much in the center. I just took my test piece and flopped it over so I had a factory edge. And I scribed the line, scribed the line. So you're getting one hive per, per 10 inch slice on that four foot length. And this center piece, uh, yeah. That center piece is a throwaway. That's fine, this stuff's cheap. So let's burn one out here. Keep your cord over here on the side of you. Drop it in the track, like so. Back it up to where the center of your blade is here, where the bolt down is. So you want to plunge, it'll go through that material, and then you can walk the dog. Let's do it. Had a little oopsie on the end there because I was holding the stupid camera. That's fine. It'll be fine. Let me check it, see how close I am here. 10 inches on, on the button. So I'm gonna get six beehives. Looks like per sheet, four by eight sheet. So all I did was take my test piece, drop it here, bring up the edges to where it's nice, scribe my line. Now I may just set up, I may be able to just bunch all these pieces up and run down through with my Craig saw and make this cut and make that cut on my 19 and 3 quarter. Bada bing. See you later. Bye bye.